today I'd like to talk to you about the strawberry full moon on June 14th. This is also a super moon and the sun, I mean <laughs> the moon, will be in Sagittarius at 23 degrees. And the sun is currently in Gemini and we are more busy, more talkative, and our mental processes are more clear. Therefore, it's a, it's a good time to have those conversations you've been putting off. It will be easier to consider your own position on something as well as be able to express it. Mercury is also now direct and powerfully positioned in Gemini. Now, the moon here suggests there could be a completion or a culmination in the area of Sagittarius in your chart. An area with a craving for something out of the ordinary and more exciting, liberating. There are new, there's new possibilities, new perspectives and revelations and ideas coming to light here. And you may want to ask yourself, what have you learned about this area of your life? Because this is also where the South Node has been prior to the South Node moving into Scorpio earlier this year. For the last um, two years or so, we had the, um, well, for 18 months, we had the nodes in Gemini and Sag. So this is an axis that's been very um, potently played in the last couple of years and this lunation will definitely be tying into some of those topics so if this has been your say for example your fourth house if it falls in Sagittarius you may have been um, looking for a new home or searching for a home or um, Topics including home and work have been um, big themes for you. Or um, one of your parents may be a big theme in this area. Moving overseas, um, buying a home, buying a property, um, and that type of thing. So um, look at where Sagittarius falls for you in your chart and see how this culmination, this fruition of some kind has got something to do with possibly some of the things you've been dealing with for the last while. Now, in numerology, the number 23 can indicate transformation and innovation and ultimately progress through change that facilitates spiritual growth. Now, this full moon also takes place in the nakshatra of Mula, which means roots and destroying illusion to go beyond. Mula nakshatra is associated with end-of-life events or a precursor to a new beginning. Deeply buried or hidden facets of one's life can be revealed now. Or you may become more aware of your inner world and the truth found here. There's a commitment to resolve between choices. With a firm belief, optimism and hard work to succeed, to align your life with what is true and authentic for you going forward. After all, if the roots aren't healthy, the plant cannot grow or bloom. Therefore, the nutrients and the soil, the surroundings, must facilitate growth. The placement must be according to the plant's need for sun and so forth. The full moon is ruled by Jupiter, currently in five degrees of Aries, Visiting the house of Mars, who is the ultimate dispositor in dignity here, indicating an overwhelming drive to act, to cut, to defend, and to begin. We feel so done with something. We want to begin 
anew. So you can also have a look at the Aries house in your chart where there's an intense energy for new beginnings that is connected to the Sagittarius house and also the Pisces and Scorpio houses in your chart. Now the sun and the moon both make harmonious aspects to Saturn, indicating an acceptance of the responsibility and hard work it may take to get to your goal. You may experience that you are now ready to examine the structures of your life. Yikes! <laughs> In order to align who you are with what you do. Saturn now retrograde, you may be asking yourself what is no longer practical. The discipline and drive is flowing more naturally now. In order to keep your emotions under control, to organize and plan your way out. But overall, Saturn's retrograde period up to the 23rd of October will be making things very clear to us as to what is no longer working, producing, providing, what commitments are no longer in alignment, what is no longer worth your time, and where is it that we must create physical, real-world changes that may not be that easy at first. Therefore, trust the timing. Since the sun and moon is also squaring Neptune, creating a T-square, it will be easier to be manipulated by others, to be deceived or used or to make wrong choices. It's also easier for some to sacrifice too much of themselves for others. Therefore, it's important to stay aware of this tendency, pay attention to your intuition, avoid alcohol, drugs, or any unhealthy escapism habits, and ask yourself, what is realistic? Don't get lost in the fantasy. This energy can affect some of us with feelings of discouragement and maybe even a lack of energy regarding our ideals and reality. Um, it can be a no. Um, don't allow old habits or prejudices to mislead you and double check who and what you can trust. We have Mercury dignified in Gemini, now direct, squaring Saturn in dignity in Aquarius, now retrograde. And they kind of played tag there. And usually this can cause difficulty in conversations or communications. There can be misunderstandings. But the moon's trine to Mars can balance out our lack of energy with more oomph and confidence also assisting us in getting our point across to others without being offensive. We can accomplish hard mental work now with much more ease if we apply ourselves. Don't start anything now that you cannot finish because with this intense new beginning energy in, in the Aries area of your chart, we can want to start something impulsively and this is where we want to make sure that we are really thinking things through and just giving it a bit more time, allowing what needs to end to end and, um, and so forth. Now, Mars also at 15 degrees and in dignity in Aries reminds us of being careful of impulsiveness and accidents it's important not to speed, not to play with weapons, and so forth. Um, Mars is also conjunct Chiron, and this can bring up um, old wounds, but it also allows for um, a lot of healing opportunities to take place. Mercury is also still trining Pluto, and this can bring up obsessive thoughts about something in particular or someone in particu particular. You may need time alone to reflect and dive deeper into your sense of self. Your conversations and communications can have profound effects now and reveal truths not before 
spoken of. Venus in Taurus squares Saturn in Aquarius, and we can be fearful of losing property, possessions, a sense of security, a love, or a relationship. Some people get married for security under an aspect such as this. But overall, we will be re-evaluating our relationships, what we put in and get out, our boundaries, our expectations can be unrealistic at times. So be aware that we are all just human. You may become very aware that others cannot feel what you are feeling deep within. For many, this can cause either the realization that things are not working, causing separations and breakups, or that you are ready to commit on a deeper level. But after all, we are dealing here with um, relationships um, and what makes them work. And I recently watched a video of Mel Robbins where she speaks about the foundations of healthy relationships, which begins with awareness of yourself and the other. It also comes with addressing conflict and how conflict is addressed between couples or between people in general and relationships. And then thirdly, values our values and their values, and then fourthly, connection. And I would strongly recommend watching that video um, on YouTube. I will also put the link in the description box below if you'd like to watch that. It's definitely um, something I think all couples and all people that have close relationships, whether it's love relationships, um, or business relationships, or just family in general. Um, these things um, are valuable to listen to. That said, Venus dignified in Taurus is also conjunct Uranus, and on her way to conjunct the North Node of Destiny in Taurus. And we can expect the unexpected with love and money issues. Relationships can take a sudden turn for the good or bad. New relationships can start out of the blue. Or you may just become very aware of stagnancy and have a desire for change or excitement. So you may, in the area of Taurus in your chart, want to um, explore new ground, spice things up, do something different. Um, this placement also requires more freedom in love. Um, whatever happens now is karmic and doors can open or close, leading you towards the path you are supposed to take. It's got a very eclipse type of energy. It can be a sudden turnaround that is very unexpected. And, um... Since this is also um, Venus, um, the ruler of the North Node, and as this Mars is also in dignified in Aries at this time, and Venus dignified in Taurus at this time, the rulers of the North and South Node currently, um, with Venus in the sign of the North Node, um, <clears throat> I would definitely say, and with Mars um, being dignified in Aries with Jupiter, the ruler of the previous South Node um, of things that we have been purging, this is very, very much related to um, eclipse events of the last two years, as well as <clears throat> karmic changes that are directing us onto the path that we are supposed to be. And um, so I wouldn't take anything too lightly that happens during this time. 
Financially, this is a very erratic time, so gambling is not a great idea as markets and investments across the board will possibly experience extreme ups and downs. Earthquakes is also more possible with these placements. Um, Neptune continues to sextile Pluto and collectively we are all saying goodbye to some aspect of life and holding on will only make things harder. We continue to question beliefs we have had most of our lives, um, truths that may have been lies. We are searching, but this can be an opportunity to tune inward. Let the dead branches fall and find and focus on your purpose in the meaning of life and what it is to be human, what it is to be real, free, and the real you. And are your relationships reflecting this? Is your life reflecting this? Do you feel fulfilled on the inside? Now, collectively, we could expect news covering, once again, issues concerning gun laws, um, acts of violence, accidents, um, legislation connected to travel, um, um, fights for freedom, fights for individuality, um, free speech, um, teachers, schools, children, um, learning in general, learning institutions, um, aviation in general, um, international affairs, leaders having persuading speeches, leaders coming and going, and possibly a loosening of restrictions in some areas, and a tightening again, or the, or the, the talk of tightening in some areas. Now, sensitive organs during this time are the liver, the sacrum, the thigh bone, the tailbone, the hip muscles, the hip joints, the lumbar vertebra, the lumbar muscle. Um, you also want to be more careful with your head, the face, the brain, arteries, hair and blood can all be more sensitive with the intensity in these areas. Now, I'd also like to read to you the inside degrees for Sagittarius at 23 degrees. A woman wearing many tiny bells. Methodology, technique, the how of things. Immersing yourself in the field of new ideas, fresh approaches, and innovative paths, imaginatively and energetically. Exposing yourself to new possibilities, visions, and ways to evolve. The body's wisdom musically in touch and in tune. Sensing the resonance of cellular awakening. Eager and enthusiastic and bright, you have given over to the process. Always in midstream, seizing upon opportunities, challenges, openings needing to know just how it feels at the micro levels, what it is like to be free, to be joyous, to be unrestricted, here in the body, in the world. You seek the full-on motivating spark of knowing what it feels like to be tuned out and discovering what it really means to be tuned in all the way. I also want to read to you the inside degrees of the sun at 23 Gemini, which I also feel is so important at this time. A tunnel created by trees. Intervention by your own greater self within the patterns of the personal story. A vision is granted. A way is shown, yet to follow it will mean many shatterings. A cosmic future realm, uncompromising and magnificent, vibrant and cocky, 
The power of the crown, the truth that takes you by surprise. So much is opening. All you need is to be there and ask. The expanded eye aimed directly at you and drawing you through. I was going to stop there, but I think I'm going to also read to you the Sabian symbol connected to the main dispositor of this moon, which is Mars in Aries, dignified at 15 degrees. An Indian weaving a ceremonial blanket. The keynote here is projecting into everyday living the realization of wholeness and fulfillment. Implied is the profound fact that every individual has as his ultimate conscious task the weaving of his immortal body, his Gnostic robe of glory. It may sound very mystical and far out, but there is a moment in every cycle when, in however small of a degree, every individual may be confronted with the potentiality of a fulfilling act of self-realization and may ever so relatively find himself clothed in light for an instant. We are told by it that the fulfillment of desire is a possibility. At whatever level, and in however incomplete a manner it may be experienced. And since Mars is also the ruler of the South Node, it again brings the anchoring message of letting go of something that's finished its course, that has been taking a long time and it's been hard, but it is no longer a fit and no longer of value. Perhaps this is the moment you were created for. Esther 4 verse 14. Thank you so much for listening. Please like and subscribe and you can also check out my 2022 astrology horoscopes for each individual rising sign, each approximately 90 minutes long which is great in planning out your year and better in preparing for the cosmic weather and how the current cycles are possibly affecting you. May the sun shine bright on you this day. May there be blessings coming your way. Until next time. Bye-bye.